So the internet exploded all, all around this new Risk of Rain game, Risk of Rain 2, and... Well, I think it did. At least I, I think it did. Well, in any case, I'm really excited to play it. But, but, first, I feel like we should just go back to the first Risk of Rain, because I still think that it's a pretty cool, cool game. Like, even, even up to this day, like, I used to play this a ton. Like, I had so much fun with this. So let's just let's just do this. Let's just do this for like a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna play as a huntress. It's like my favorite class, I think, in this one. Like others are kind of like quirky and stuff and could be interesting, but huntress seems seems like seems like fun. So basically, what this game is, it's like a, an endless. Like, okay, so at its core, it's a roguelike, right? Like, you, you start as a character who has kind of nothing, like the very basic version of your character. Uh, then you kill enemies, and then those enemies drop experience in gold or coins or whatever. And then you use those coins and experience to enhance your character. Uh, and then after a little bit, you actually get to get some really, really cool things here and there. And this is like an endless survival. So like the game starts uh, in the top right. You can see it's like very easy. Uh, so the game starts like at the easiest difficulty and then the longer you play it, the harder it becomes. I think it's like it has like infinite scaling. I might be a little bit wrong about it because like there is this one final difficulty which doesn't change, but like I'm pretty sure that everything gets like stronger even though the difficulty doesn't technically change uh, so yeah you start like this basic version of your character then you pick up some items for example we picked up that sprouting egg which would allow our character to start healing super fast whenever we exit combat and i believe exit combat means not get hit for like three seconds or not use any abilities for three seconds uh, so as long as we stay, stay out of combat like that, we, we're gonna start healing up real fast, and that's usually a good idea. Oh my god, that's perfect. So this is like the strong, <laughs> well, maybe not the strongest item in this game, but like I really like this one, because uh, like you would think that you just kind of like increase the damage of your character to keep up with the uh, difficulty and whatnot. But you can't necessarily do that too much, like levels increase the attack power of your character or the damage or whatever. Uh, but there aren't really items. I mean, okay, there are like one or two items that actually give you raw attack damage. But otherwise, you can't actually increase it. So instead, you pick up all of these items that have uh, some kinds of uh, proc effects. And those proc, proc effects scale with your damage. Uh, they like scale with your damage, they will do like 60% of your damage or something like that as a random proc. So the idea, like the way you would want to get your damage going is by getting a lot of these on proc items and have them just proc as often as possible. Uh, so ideally you would want to have as many... Um, like as many different items as possible at first and only then enhance them. Uh, because you can pick up multiples of uh, the same item, but there are like not diminishing returns necessarily. Like uh, the way it's done in this game is um, the first item will give its full benefit, right? And then the second one will give slightly different benefit. We can actually like look it up on Wikipedia or whatever or like any online source, but it will just be different numbers, right? Uh, and then it would usually stack up up to a certain point, and then it would just stop. Uh, so, for example, attack speed. Uh, there is like this um, soldier syringe item that just gives you 10% attack speed or something like that. And you should only ever get up to, I believe, 13 of those, because after that point they just stop working. Uh, and that's just kind of it. <laughs> That's just kind of the way it works, right? So you can st still stack items, just don't expect them to be as powerful as the first instance of that item. And of course there are like bosses in this game, so for example right now we are fighting this Wandering Vag Vagrant, the, the, the like jellyfish type of a thingy. Uh, and uh, 
you just kind of kite it around like that. Then you, when, when you kill bosses, each boss is guaranteed to drop an item. And there's also even a chance to drop a boss specific item, which I call them legendaries because they are like yellow. So it makes, makes sense to call them like that. Uh, but maybe there is like a different terminology for them. Uh, so there's that. And also, so your goal every level is to find this teleporter. You activate it. Then you wait 90 seconds for it to activate. It also spawns a bunch of enemies at your general location. And you just want to kind of clean up those enemies. Uh, because you would have to have zero enemies left in order to enter the teleporter. Uh, so you clean up the enemies and then after you are done... Oh, okay. After you are done you just go into it. But I believe there was like a, an item dispenser here. A chance shrine. I believe that's how it's called. Uh, so these ones have like a chance to give you an item. It's not guaranteed. And every time you use it, it increases the gold requirement. So right there, we can't use it anymore because not enough gold. Uh, and because of the way this game works, right? Like um, difficulty constantly increases. So the way it's like meant to be played is that you want to improve your character faster than the difficulty increases, right? So you don't want to fall behind the difficulty curve and like the moment you do it's gonna get like so much harder to get back up uh, because not like think of it this way right you start doing much less damage to enemies like as the difficulty ramps up so it let's say takes twice as much damage to kill an enemy right uh, so now you're earning experience and gold and items twice like it takes you twice as long to earn them right and then so like you are already, you will be, by the time the next difficulty level reaches, you are, you already will be like 50% behind from the very start. And then it just keeps going, right? It just exponentially increases that gap. Uh, so ideally you would want to run through levels as fast as possible, get as many, like clean up those levels and get all of the items you would want from them and then move on and then move on and it's like it's a very nice way of doing this like it's a very nice way of doing this like endless survival uh because wow that's huge uh because uh, it just kind of gives you a reason to like to risk it right <laughs> yeah i mean it's called risk of rain right but it gives you like a very good reason to risk dying because you actually need to move forward like if you wait too long it will just be overwhelming eventually like no matter what you do uh, so you always gotta keep going i'm actually getting really lucky with this drop so for example we've got that um so we've got that mortar mortar just has a chance to fire off uh, a missile just in front of us and it'll do a little bit of damage it's not like amazing but it's decent like, it, it's worth having one of those. Uh, then we have that armor, and I believe after one, two, three, four, like you can actually see most of the items actually like show up on your character, and it's those circles you see around us. Like, if I take a hit, one of them lights up. So, when I take that many hits, that armor activates, and I stop, like, I stop taking damage for a little bit. In fact, I believe I get to reflect it. So, like, that's kind of huge, right? Like, it's like. Getting damage mitigation is really, really important here because eventually you will reach the point where every single hit is going to be lethal. So, like, the longer you can delay that, the better, right? Like, <laughs> the further you can offset that, the better. It's it's truly, truly huge. So, getting that item is like super lucky. Uh, and also, we've got that. Uh, well, I'm sure almost that. Uh, we've got that uh, poison worm thingy. It will just. Um, like poison enemy, the enemy we collide with forever, like until they die. And the more those centipedes you have, the more enemies you can poison at once. That's how they scale. They don't actually increase in damage or anything. And also they don't really do much damage either, uh, but it's still pretty decent. Like you want, as, as I said before, you want as many damage sources as possible. Also, it's worth knowing that most of your items and stuff get disabled when you're climbing these ropes. Probably because it would be very easy to abuse those ropes for like free survivability. And when you hear the clock, it means the difficulty just went up. 
so I was kind of just running around doing nothing, which is not the greatest. And also as a hunter, it's like she has this unique ability to... She auto-aims, right? Like whenever I'm running, she just shoots arrows wherever the enemies are, uh, while most other classes would need to turn that way. But sometimes it just doesn't work the way you want it, like especially if you have just just turns a corner or something like that. It won't actually target the enemies you are trying to shoot at. So that's not ideal. And by the way, let's like continue talking about all of our other items. Why is that thing taking no damage? That's weird. That was weird. Uh, I have that golden gun. The more gold I have, the more damage I do. Uh, up to a cap. Like, I think I can do up to, like, 20 more damage with every single hit I do. Uh, depending on how much gold I have and more golden guns don't actually increase the damage they increase uh, the rate at which you gain damage so like you would need to have less gold for maximum damage benefit that sort of stuff so it's also like pretty, pretty, pretty neat I think uh, and of course I have the ukulele ability that I forgot to talk about it's uh, it does look this like electric shock that you can see every once in a while and it just hits everything, like it just hits everything that it like, attaches to and it does decent damage and it has infinite scaling with the more ukuleles you get and that's, that's huge, like that's a very very good damage item and uh, not as good as some other ones I wanna say, like uh, the missile item is actually like really really strong I hope I can get it this time Man, I'm getting like all of the best items. So the next one I have that infusion, like uh, this thing right here. Every time I kill an enemy, I get um, like one extra health and it scales infinitely. There is a life cap uh, for your character in like, it's 9,999 HP, right? Uh, but until you reach that point, every enemy we kill right now is going to give us a permanent one health boost. And also I got the hit list as my last item. And what that thing does is that uh, it will mark enemies with an X uh, like that. And if I manage to kill them fast enough, I get one permanent damage. Which is also a huge rarity in this game, as I said before. Like getting actual like damage is really, really rare. So it's like... It's huge. It's actually I might actually die here, so that's cool. <laughs> I almost died. Uh, those guys hurt. Okay, like I don't really have any any life steal yet or any like damage mitigation or anything like that. I do have that armor, but I need to take a bunch of hits before it starts healing me, and that's like not necessarily the greatest way. Damn. I also can't get my hit list in. I'm actually kind of struggling right now. I I don't. I don't have... I don't have enough firepower. Oh, there we go. That's huge. Uh, so that thing will give us... I think it's one extra health per second. And this is like the only item in the game... One of the only items in the game that just... Scale... Just... As it is. Like, it will just give you the same amount of uh, life regen for... For like every instance of an item that you have. And that's huge. Also, when you are blinking as Huntress, you get to be invulnerable for like a second, that's useful, of course. Uh, usually that's how you avoid most of the really damaging mechanics. Most of the characters, by the way, have some sort of like a dodge or a blink ability, which helps them deal with certain situations that they otherwise wouldn't be able to deal with. So. I've spent way too long on this level already. Difficulty is already medium. I haven't even looted everything. I believe there is some more stuff also in the beginning, so I'm just gonna go there real fast. I also have yet to get even one stack on my hit list, and that's pretty bad. Like, I would... I would very much like to kill something that requires killing, but I just don't get... I don't even want to say lucky, but it just doesn't show up on people who are about to die, right? And that's kind of how you want to do it. It still has a cap to it, it's not like infinite the way infusion is, uh, the health item, but getting like 20 extra, I think it stacks up, up up to 20. Okay, I'm actually getting super lucky here. It stacks up to 20 and getting 20 extra damage 
is huge. It's actually huge. So let's hope that it procs at least for somebody. Because getting one more damage right now, it would also be huge. So I got this Frost Relic that gives me this Icicles around me. Each of those Icicles is an instance of damage. So for every enemy I kill, I get one of those Icicle spawns. And that is the best item in the game for damage. Like, it just does so much damage so consistently that eventually late game your goal would be to just kill one somebody and then you run out, run in like this and then everyone just dies to your icicles and that's all you do and that's all you do for the rest of the game again would be amazing if got i forgot my hit list proc on any of these guys but it's not meant to be i guess it's just it's just not meant to be what can i say oh i'm actually almost dead Oh, there we go. Got my hit list and I'm dead. Cool. Great. <laughs> so, this is a punishing game. If you screw up, you kind of screw up. I should have just healed myself, but I really wanted to get that. I really wanted to get the damage. I really wanted it. You know what? Let's try again. This is way too short. Let's try again. Let's do it this better this time. So, this is like the normal difficulty. There's one more difficulty mode after this. And usually nor normal difficulty ends up with you just spending, like, I don't know, like it's much easier than the hardest one. Basically, if you get a good start, like I did last time, and don't screw up like I did last time, uh, you can spend like hours on the game and never be even challenged. And then eventually it just becomes kind of tedious almost. But the hardest difficulty is like so damn punishing that if you don't get a good start, you will probably die 10 minutes in uh, almost every single time. Also, no enemies. I don't know what happened here. This is pretty bad. Like, I would like to have some enemies right now. That would be pretty cool. That would be really cool. But I did find the teleporter, so that's cool, I guess. Some enemies would still be nice. Okay, there we go. One jellyfish. That's all I needed. That's all I ever needed. All I ever wanted. Man, I can't believe that I died there. Like, having that hit list, I could have just... I could have done so many good things with that. That could have been an epic run. It's kind of unfortunate that I just... That I'm that... That I'm just... Just didn't play too well. <laughs> But this game is like really punishing, like even when you are like at maximum health, at actual like cap health and stuff, uh, sometimes you would find yourself in a situation where you're like just dead, like you will find yourself in a crossfire and it would just be too much for your character and you would just die. Uh, so even though it might seem that you have broken the game, no, nope, you haven't, like you will you'll probably get messed up if you are careless, so you gotta, you gotta be... You gotta be very cautious at all times. And I really like that aspect too, because like this game technically isn't really like too hard. It's more like, like it's cause it, like there is not much complexity to it, right? You just pick up items, shoot enemies, use your four abilities and try not to die, right? Like that's it. But um, at the same time, it's like super, so it's super mindless like that, right? Like you don't actually have to think about too many things at once. You just you just play the game like at its most basic level, right? But it also feels really satisfying because it can be difficult. Like it's not complex, but it can be difficult. And I think that's where the fun comes from. Also, you have these drones, which are also pretty dope. I believe this is the healing one that I picked up, I didn't read it. I think it's the healing one. So they will just follow you around. They do have health and hitboxes, so enemies can kill them, but luckily you can revive the drones. Uh, the problem, like, the only downside is that every time you do that, it becomes uh, pricier and pricier to revive them. So ideally you don't want to do that too much. But there are also certain items that help you like heal your drones or summon more drones or there are some items that actually synergize with the like revival of your drones like there are there is this there's this fireworks item uh, that shoots fireworks every time you interact with an object 
and that includes reviving drones. And so that would let you um, just drop, uh, like, uh, summon a bunch of fireworks as long as your drones keep dying. And those things do a ton of damage and they also check enemies all the way across the map. So it's usually a really good way to, like, clean up the map after you are kind of done with it. So I'm just gonna start the teleporter here and then we're gonna go to the left. And uh, again, like, so the bosses are random. Like, so far we have only seen this uh, jellyfish boss, but there are more bosses than that. And also there are, like, different versions for them and stuff. So, like, there is a bunch of complexity in this game. And this game is, like, super old. I think it's, like, 10 years old or something like that. I might be wrong about that, so, so don't, don't, like, don't trust me too much. But it's like, I still think that it's pretty fun, like, uh, it has this uh, retro, I guess, art style to it, and it's like, doesn't look too bad, and you just run around, do this, like, cool shooty stuff. Also, it's co-op, so you can have three friends with you doing this stuff, and that's pretty cool. Zolt Chopper, critical strike, low health enemies. I believe low health is... Um, 20-ish percent or 15 percent and then the more choppers you have the higher the percentage becomes uh, so it's the, again like again what i don't know what i was trying to say there but basically it's like it's definitely like a roguelike right you get the, the items and then they synergize with each other and if i had like one um kind of complain about this game it's not even like a complaint it's just it just i just kind of don't like that too much it's the fact that uh, you can't like necessarily break your character too much um because because they implemented all of those caps for how much benefit you can get from an item and whatnot uh, and it's just I wish you could just go super crazy with that, you know what I mean? I wish you could go like ultra crazy, but at the same time it would of course be like super broken and stuff. So like they still want you to have challenge. And I understand that choice, I guess. I just wish I could have 20,000% attack speed, you know? Instead of just, uh, I believe it's 130% extra and that's it. So, that's, but that's just me, you know? That's just me. So let's go. To a second world here. Uh, this run we aren't really getting too many cool things like our that hoof we have just gives us 20% more movement speed or something like that. Uh, that crowbar deals 50% more damage to enemies that are above 90% health I think. Those chunks of meat just drop healing meat from enemies when we hit them. Uh, the old chopper gives us uh, Guaranteed criticals versus low health enemies. So like it's a very nice way to execute. I guess we have both uh, Both ways to like execute people, right? We have extra damage to high health and extra damage to low health But because we only have one instance of those items, they don't actually give us too much, but it's It's not like worth it <laughs> Like it's not enough extra damage to justify using it so, like that's not ideal also every time you take your portal it teleports you to like a random world um, except i believe except the very last one the very last one the very first one will always be that like swampy area uh, and the very last one will always be the like ancient temple i believe and then the very final one which is like the boss fight uh, it's also going to be the same one but like it has like decent variety to it and like randomness and stuff so like sometimes you would be like oh that's i screwed up there yeah that's definitely my fault and then other times you'd be like oh well i didn't have i only had mad packs like what am i supposed to do with those right like sometimes you can get screwed by the game but i think that's also the where the fun comes of it too uh because you can also treat it like um Okay, I got screwed by the game here, but I can't believe that I survived for an hour doing that, right? Like, I didn't win, but I can't believe how long I have survived. And I feel like there is also satisfaction to be had in that. You know what I mean? Uh, so, it just... I know, it's just like... It's a brilliant game. Like, for how old it is, 
for how long ago it was released, I think it had like some amazing things happen like in it, just the way it was designed and everything, like it was fantastic. And as I said before, I played this at Ton. I actually can't reach that item yet. I need either extra jump jumping speed or a second jump. I don't have either of those, so that thing is kind of unreachable for my character. Or if I had enough movement speed, I would have been able to reach it from here. Like, from here. But I also don't have enough movement speed, so we're gonna get screwed over a little bit here. Against this run, not as good of an item as it was last one. Like, last one was the god run, and I screwed it up. So here we got the war banner, every time we level up. Uh, it will create like a field in which we attack faster, stronger, and we move faster. And it's like a neat item, but it's only ever useful for like... For when you are leveling, and around level 15 is where the like huge diminishing returns kick in, and it will take you like a good good 10 minutes to get a level so the war banner kind of stops being too useful but you can still like you can still time time your levels so that you level let's say around the teleporter and then when the boss fight comes uh you have easier time fighting that boss because of that banner oh perfect we got another jump so now we can go back and loot that item this could not okay this is like i i i'm kind of lucky you know what I'm kind of lucky today, I'm feeling good about this. So this is what the double jump allows us to do, otherwise I wouldn't be able to reach this. That's kind of cool. And there's also like a decent variety of enemies, like you got those imps, you got those weird ghost boys, you got those like... Oh, so that's the war banner by the way. Uh, you got these things, I believe they are called Lemurians, maybe? I might be wrong about that. Uh, but they are like tiny, tiny dinosaurs. But then later on you find bigger versions of them. So that, that's like pretty cool. I think this game is like super cool. And now we have two healing drones, so I... I can't even complain about me having like, Ah, oh, I just don't have any items to heal myself with, so I'm just gonna go die, right? Like, I... Won't have any sort of, um... Fallback there. And we also got tougher times, which I think it told us it has like 14% damage reduction. That's actually a lie. I think it gives 8-ish or something like that. For some reason, I don't know. I don't know why they couldn't update the toe tip, toe tip there, but they didn't. So it's just strong. So there you go. So there you go. It's still super strong, but it's just slightly not as strong as advertised. You know what I mean? Just slightly not as strong. So I'm gonna replace my golden grenade, gold grenade for the Somerang. And let's try not to waste our gold, shall we? Because I feel like I have a big lack of gold at the moment. Uh, and I would like not to have that. I actually forgot that I need to aim my stuff because I'm playing the Huntress. Because as I said before, like she just gets auto-aim on everything. <laughs> So I threw my Somerang a completely wrong direction there. But we kind of recovered it, just slightly. So ideally, right, because it's like... Um, it's a game about killing things, earning levels, and earning gold as fast as you can. Ideally, you would want to... Never stop shooting. Like, you would always want to be... In a situation where you're doing damage. And if you aren't, then you need to look for a fight. Because, again, you should never like fall behind in terms of levels or items or anything like that. And you need to keep the fight going. So, got a ton of health regen. Uh, that armor really likes me, apparently, because this is... It just keeps falling. You know what? I'm gonna grab, grab this. So, the snow globe will freeze everybody. And um, that's good. Freezing everybody is good. Uh, it will just make it so that we can kill them. Like it's like a survivability damage item, kind of, because like everyone will be frozen, so I shouldn't care about my survivability. So I can just go in and do a bunch of damage to them. And also, everyone is frozen, so they won't hurt me. So like it, it's just good. 
It's just decent. Also, we got that, those thorns picked up at some point. A good idea to just kind of run into the enemies and get some thorns damage, but you, you definitely gotta be careful. And it's, it's very much like that Frost Relic death we had like 10 minutes ago or something, 20 minutes ago, um, where I just overestimated my survivability and got just one shot by, a, by an elite enemy, which I really should not have been. I did a bunch of damage, but I got destroyed, and that should not have happened, basically. Basically the way this works. Also, all of the enemies have like different attack patterns that you, like over time, learn how to dodge and stuff. So there's like definitely complexity, but it's mostly like reflexive comple complexity, right? You don't actually, you don't need to think about this. It just, over time you learn it, and then you just do it automatically. You don't have to ever have a conscious thought about it ever. And that's kind of relaxing, at least in my opinion. So let's use our freezing, right? Okay, you know what? It didn't... Oh, I, I guess it freezes them over time. And the stronger their enemy is, the longer it will take to freeze them. Okay, I get that. That's cool. I actually didn't know how it worked, so... Now we know. And there are like a lot of items. And the way they did like the re replayability for this game is that... Um, your account actually starts with only like a couple of items unlocked that can drop and then the more you play it you complete different achievements and stuff and then more and more items uh, become accessible to you and it just gets more and more fun and like easier over time and then you get to like really play around with it the longer you're in so right now we just got like a, an epic item where we can just Insta-kill somebody. There's like a 1% chance to insta-kill an enemy, which is huge. Uh, maybe not the best for this character, because I don't really have too many hits per second. So I will definitely need to get as, many, as much as attack speed as I can possibly get for this. But there are some abilities where we have like multi-hits and stuff. It's just not a lot of them. And the way the items work, by the way, they usually only apply to the damage that comes from your character. So for example, there is a character that drops turrets. Items don't work on turrets, but turrets do scale with your attack power and levels, I believe, but just not with your items. So right right there we heard like a like a sniper shot and that was like an insta kill proc. It felt satisfying, right? Like they they have like really solid sound effects and everything for every everything you do. So everything feels Kind of impactful, which is cool. Okay, I don't actually like those uh, boxing gloves too much. Like, it might seem like a cool idea, right? Like, you get knockback on every single hit you do. But in reality, very often you would just push things into places you don't want them to be. And that's not necessarily ideal. Let's see if I can freeze the worm. Probably not, right? He's a boss and everything. So like, he'll just erupt like that, and then he'll just do a swirl and just drop down. So again, you can figure out the patterns there and figure out the best way to dodge him and whatnot. Wow, well, one of my drones actually managed to die there, so that's, that's a bit unfortunate. Let's utilize our um, um, shrine, not shrine though, but level up thingy. The banner, so that's sweet, sweet damage boost, because I kind of need it. I feel like my level is a little bit behind right now, and since I haven't picked up any sort of big damage boosts, uh, I'm just playing with default damage values here. Except this banner. This banner is like the only thing. It's the only damaging thing we have. And that's not the best damaging thing, let me tell you. Although it can be good. I mean, we are definitely getting the value from it right now. Like, things are dying at a decent-ish pace. Oh, I actually missed my stuff. Oops. And I'm not dead yet, so that's also huge, I guess. That movement speed... Movement speed is huge in this game, like... The ability to outrun enemies definitely comes in handy when you need to outrun enemies. There we go. Panic mines. Drop, drop a mine when you drop to... I believe 30, 40-ish percent health. 
And uh, that's the thing, I guess. Not fantastic, but I'll take it. Uh, there are like better panic items. There is an item that just freezes time when you drop to low health. Uh, so that's huge, especially if you pair it up with certain other. Like, um, there is an activatable item. By the way, there are like activatable items, which I did. Think that, that's the thing. Um, that heals you, right? Like, there is one that heals you, so having that panic time stop and then letting, like, the heal in is kind of huge because all of the damage stops at you at that point and that gives you a second or two to activate your healing instead of just 100 milliseconds or something like that, right? So if you are a little bit slower on, like, your reactions, like, that's a crucial combo for you and you can, you can get it and that could be... Could be what saves the run for you or whatever. That's pretty cool. Also, there's this underwater world, which is kind of interesting. It's, it's kind of neat. I like it. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Wait, they killed my drone already. That's so sad. Okay, I definitely need like I need more fire firepower. But look, like, look at that. I'm not doing any damage. So I need, I need to get some items that actually do things. Cause I have only gotten survivability stuff. And it's pretty bad. <laughs> that shot dealt like 172k damage or something like that. So that's also interesting because it doesn't technically insta-kill them. It just does a ton of damage that like probably nobody ever has. Except maybe. Except maybe at some point it won't be an insta kill. Who knows? Oh, there we go. Got a Colossus. So that's a different boss. Uh, this guy, if you are ranged, like there are melee and range characters in this game. So if you are ranged, you just do this. You just completely demolish him from distance. If you are melee, he does like a couple of different abilities. He has like a foot stomp and a hand clap. And. Well, either of those can be dodged and avoided and you just you just kind of kite him back and forth and it works for the most part so let's just kill him real fast that should give us enough enough cash enough dollars enough money to buy whatever the hell we want to buy and we're gonna go from there maybe even a level up who knows Probably wouldn't want to level, so what does this do? Oh, attack faster at lower health. You know what? I'll take it. It's not fantastic. Oh, there we go. Infusion. So this thing will give me permanent health for every kill I do. It's usually like really good to pick it up earlier on for obvious reasons. Like you have lower health enemies. There are lots of them, and like getting one health at level one is much bigger of a deal than getting one health at level uh, like 20 or something, right? Also, I should be utilizing my dub double jump a little bit more because that would save my draw drones a lot, uh, since they just like they just run around with your character. So if your character like jumps up super fast, they will follow. They will try to follow as fast as they can, and that's kind of a big deal when you're trying to keep your drones alive, which you should. Also, enemies have a chance to spawn as leads. Um, it, I, I think it will be demonstrated by them having a different color than they usually do. And what that would mean is that depending on the colors, they would possess a different ability. I believe like yellow enemies teleport to you, blue enemies will do that uh, lightning attack around them. Uh, green enemies will heal everyone around them. Uh, every once in a while and so you, you just gotta kind of adapt to it and deal with them accordingly it's very like 
I wanna say Diablo-esque in like that respect, right? Like, in fact, this whole game is very, very much like those um, action RPGs, like like Diablo, like Path of Exile, except it's much, much faster. It's like, it's like a much more contained experience because like the reason you would play those games is like, right, well, I actually wanna see what would happen if I did this build with this character and then this item dropped and now I want to test it out to see how much like damage I can do with that stuff, right? And that's exactly like the logic behind this game. You're like, hey, I have this stuff that happened to my character and now I want to see what happens when it all works together and how much damage I do and how well I can deal with enemies and stuff. And um, the difference being is that this takes like half an hour, an hour and in those other games you could end up developing your character for like months. And uh, not that it's bad, of course, it's just kind of a different pace, a slightly different pace. So there were like two of those crabs, both of them were healing ones, and it was just impossible to kill that pack of enemies. So that kind of sucks. Oh, another infusion. So every infusion you get after the first one only gives you half an HP. So I think the way this works is that I would need to find like a second, like I would need it only, would only proc from like 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on, right? So like until I find a second infusion, a third infusion at this point I guess, uh, it actually won't give me the benefits of the second one, I think. Like I'm not sure whether or not they count like um, fractions or not. I think they don't, I just assume that they don't. But I might be wrong, of course. So slowly but surely we are getting that power in, trying to get more and more health, more and more survivability, but I definitely need to speed up because the difficulty is already insane and I'm here 25 minutes in, I don't have any damage items, well technically I have like 1, 2, 3, like I have that crowbar that only works on 90% health enemies, I have uh, the sticky bomb which which is actually pretty cool because it scales infinitely, unlike some other damage items, and that's huge. Uh, I have uh, the chopper that gives me guaranteed crits on low health enemies, but that doesn't really happen too often. Like, look at that, that's how low that they, they had to be in order for me to get some crits on them. And that's like, not fantastic. That's really not fantastic. And then I have an insta-kill ability, which is technically not a damage increase, not in my eyes at least. Uh, so it's not, it's not perfect. It's, it could, we, we could use better items. Oh my gosh, that poor thing, it just got blown up. I also, oh there we go, there is a teleporter. I'm just gonna activate it right now. Um, and we're gonna go from there. So if you open that cage, I believe that's how you unlock one of the characters, but since I already have him unlocked, I don't feel like fighting them right now. I think you're supposed to fight them. I might be wrong about that. Oh, there we go, soldier syringe. So our attack speed just went up by 10%. That's huge. That's really, really huge. Getting like, like this is, this is the damage that I was asking for. Okay, well, got another armor, so that's uh, a thing, I guess. <laughs> that's a thing, that's going to be a thing. But even with the extra attack speed, I'm just... I just need some damage, you know? I need something that does damage. Uh, because right now I have ways to kind of like proc damage and enhance damage, but I don't, I don't actually have actual damage items. Like, I need some procs. I need some procs, or uh, a crit item would be cool. Like an item that gives me actual like, crit percent. Because crits are always nice, like doubling your damage is always good, let's be honest. Let's be honest, so I would love to get some of those. So this is another boss that we haven't seen before, it's like an imp overlord. He does a bunch of like charging, teleporting attacks, uh, and just some AoE stuff. Uh, so he is like a tough boy. He is a tough boy if you are not careful about it. But every single hit you do has uh, sound attached to it, so sometimes it can get kind of ridiculous. But look at how slowly we kill them right now, right? It's like we have we are already past the point where we need to like wait for the teleporter to charge, 
and I just made a huge mistake, mistake of healing the Overlord by walking him through an enemy who... who heals. So he just got healed by like 10% of its health. Not 20? I think 20-ish or something like that. That's not ideal. That, that was a really, really big blunder on my part. <laughs> it's ridiculous sounding when you have like a bunch of enemies getting frozen by your stuff. But it also it's also cool sounding. It's like them old olden games back in the olden times, you know? It's pretty cool. Like to me that sounds pretty cool. Pretty cute. It can get annoying though at times. Especially if you like like your game's super loud, it can get real old real damn fast. So I'm definitely going to be utilizing this uh, banner. That's like the only way to kill this thing fast enough. Monster tooth, heal after kills. That's not bad. So now every time we kill an enemy, it will spawn like an orb that flies into our face and heals us. And that's like a much better way of healing yourself than dropping those health, health chunks and stuff. Uh, so I will definitely take this. This is, this is kind of a big healing upgrade. And now we don't even need to rely on our drones or anything like that, so that's of course huge. Um, by the way, both of our drones just died when I was running through that pack of enemies. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Also, even though we have these boxer gloves, nobody gets knocked back almost ever. So like, they are relatively weak in that respect, until you get a bunch of them. Also like stunning enemies and like... Uh, Stunning, freezing enemies, getting some knockback on enemies, usually opens them up to... Not knockback, but like... Um, uh, knock up? Airborne enemies? Uh, that usually opens them up to being vulnerable to knockback. Uh, so, while it might seem like a cool idea to freeze everybody, right? It makes it so that they are pushed away much easier. And again, you might end up pushing enemies somewhere you don't want to push them to. I'm really struggling right now. This is also going to be a failed run probably because clearing this takes way too long. My drones are also super pricey now. They keep dying. I won't even resurrect that for 1000. I will rather uh, gamble on those top shines. So like I can barely clear out this portal right now and that's not ideal in any way. Oh, and of course I'm not gonna get any drops here whatsoever. There goes my luck. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I think I can only activate one of them probably and that's it. And that's it. That's gonna be it. But I do have like a decent amount of health with all of the infusions I've been getting. So at least we got that going for us. Would be really cool to get the crit items though. And of course some of the proc damage ones. Because right now it's not looking great. Okay, what does this do actually? Massive leech? I guess I could use that. Like, um... Like this item, this activatable that we have just picked up, it gives us, um... Like... Lifesteal, Vampirism, uh, and it would be pretty bad on characters that are um, like that summon turrets, for example, because those turrets would not get healed, healed, nor would they heal you. But since Huntress does all of her damage herself, uh, Leech on her is, of course, much, much better than on somebody. I can't believe that they got that guy just fell down like that disgrace what a disgrace so since we are underwater i think i can i think i can yeah there we go it worked everything worked everything is fine so i'm already like 32 minutes in don't really have any damage going for me and the next time we teleport somewhere it's going to be much more difficult to fight other enemies so i'm really looking forward to what we can do with that because probably it's gonna take me like good 10 minutes to kill one enemy and eventually I will just end up dying. That's basically the prediction for this game. But we had a good run. I mean, I wasted my good try, so I deserve to have like nothing. 
I deserve to have no damage on my character for this one, because I, I really messed up. I really, really messed up there. Also, whenever you go through a teleporter, all of your remaining gold um, actually gets converted into experience, so it's like not a bad idea to have a bunch of gold like it won't get wasted basically like don't think about it oh i need to make sure that i have zero gold in the end so that it's not wasted because it disappears every time you go to a new level but it doesn't like actually disappear it just gets converted into experience um and that's like that's nice so right now we are level 15 which means we are not going to be leveling anytime soon especially not with the pace that we are killing enemies at um, in fact, even killing the slimes is pretty rough, pretty rough. Those are just some generic slimes. Like, you are supposed to like, kill the, the big ones super fast and it will, it will just break into the smaller parts and then you kill them all super fast. And none of that fastness is happening here, so that's, that's a thing, I guess. Damn, those crits feel good. I really need to get uh, the crit item. Like, I just need crit chance. That would help me a lot, I think. It's probably, like, one of the best ways to increase your damage. Amongst, like, other things. Because, like, crit will scale up everything. Like, all of your other items, like, all of your damage procs can actually crit. So, getting, like, I'd say 70% crit should always be your, like, priority. If you can get there, of course going to be huge but it's not looking good for us though like these poor guys aren't dying they just feel kind of awkward as I'm riddling them with arrows that do almost no damage it's it's kind of awkward for everybody involved you know it just you, you don't want to be in this situation ever so this is where we are kind of falling behind in terms of our power right like, I'm definitely behind the power curve, because it just takes me way too long to kill enemies. Like, I have good survivability, but without the damage, it kind of means nothing, because you just fall behind further and further and further. And I don't know. I don't know how long I can actually take this, how far we can take this. But I got, I got a drone. I got a damage drone, so... Maybe that's our saving grace, because that thing looks de does decent damage, right? Like 20 damage with every hit, that's about as much damage as we do with our shots. And it just keeps shooting, so as long as I keep can keep that thing alive, it should help us quite, quite a little bit with all of the damage stuff. And that's kind of my only hope right now. Maybe I can get another drone, uh, and we're gonna go from there. So let's just climb out of this pit real fast let's get some let's get some items going because there is more to this level than just that little tunnel down below already found the teleporter usually a good idea to find it early on because then you can plan out your routes through the through the level so i got an embryo a red one this one increases um Gives you a chance for your unused item to trigger twice. I don't really care about it for life leech, but if I find a good like damage item that's activatable, I will definitely start using that. That should help us a lot. Um, yeah, so one of these like loot chambers is just it gives you items and it starts cycling them. I think like two items per second or something like that and if you have good reflexes you can get what you want. I don't, so I just end up I just end up activating it twice and hoping that it gives me something good at random. Cause there's like no way. I don't actually know what this does. Create a shadow partner for 15 seconds. You know what? Let's try this. Oh this is actually you know what? This is huge. In fact it just procced my embryo. Like, I just created two shadow partners, I believe. Because we are firing two arrows at once instead of just... We are firing three arrows at once instead of just two. And I believe it activates for, like, all of the things we do. Like, all of our abilities will trigger twice and everything. And that's cool. We got found the bitter root, too. Extra health. 
Pulse is nice, of course. Um, especially works well with uh, Infusion. I don't think those bitter roots increase your health. Like, I'm actually not sure how they work, because I don't think they, they like, constantly stack with your character. I think it's just like a one-time bonus. So, like, whatever your current health is right now, it just amplifies it by 8% and then it stops working. But it's also, like, only 8%, so it's really hard to keep track of it manually, so maybe I'm just wrong. But it never seems to give, like, an extra oomph to your health past the point when you grab it. But it's, like, whatever. Health is health, you know? Health is health. What can I say? And I just can keep creating partners. No, I'm still shooting three arrows, so... Unless that embryo is bugged out of its mind and it always shoots off extra stuff, I don't actually... Like, I, I don't know what's going on there. But it's a decent damage boost. Like, that's definitely one of them damage items uh, that I was trying to get. I believe there was a chest all the way down in the bottom, I think. I might be wrong. I'm probably wrong, in fact. But I will go go all the way back anyways. Because I feel like I I feel like I need to scout that out. Because it's very important not to miss out on any loot at this moment. Because, well, I need loot. I need something. I need something to save this run. Because so far, we are just going to get screwed. Big time. Big time. So let's just go all the way down below and I will just quickly run through it see whether or not there are some items or something doesn't seem like there are so I'm just gonna go activate the teleporter and let's hope that we have enough power to survive because I am I am doubting it a little bit just just a tiny little bit not too much so I mean you, you could always make a miracle happen you know miracles miracles are a thing right that's the thing humans do so yeah yeah okay let's go back up this is really not perfect but i'll take it also there are different like wow okay there are different zoom levels to this game too so like i'm playing right like at this camera angle or whatever at this zoom level but you don't necessarily have to you can be closer or further away slightly but i just prefer this one the most i, I think it gives me like the best um like field of view while also retaining the ability to understand what's happening like right around my character so that i don't get destroyed by something i don't want to get destroyed by you know and i think that's important in a game where you're trying to survive, I feel like that's important. Oh, my thing just got, went off. It's a little bit awkward all the way up top here. I think there is also some healing monsters, so none of the damage actually matters. So I'm just gonna go down for a little bit. Let's see who teleports here with me. Because some, uh, some enemies would have teleportation abilities. Okay, that's not their hitbox. There we go. Now we are hitting them. I was actually hoping that the imp would follow me down, but he decided not to get involved, which is, I guess, understandable. I, I can get behind that, you know? Oof. I need to be careful, because I'm getting kind of screwed. Do I have any... Okay, I don't actually have any sort of... A good healing items, so I need to be very careful. I just gotta hang out on my own here for a little bit. I don't remember whether or not there are some enemies down below. There are, so let's kill them all. Probably should not have activated my activatable here. Okay, so right now we only have two arrows, so that Emperor was just like super lucky for us all this time. I'll take it. Also, I really like the music in this game. Like, it's so good, I think. And it, like, fits the world, too. I mean, it's, like, good... It's good battle music. And it's also good music for, like, the specific, like, worlds they have set up for their game. So it's, like, a win-win kind of a situation. In my eyes. 
that's well as it's ideally what you would want for your game I guess that's what I'm trying to say okay, let's kill this boys real fast sometimes those like weird graphical glitches happen now I don't know what's up with that but it will just render one frame wrong or something like that and it will recover instantly like it won't crash your game or anything it will just be one weird frame or maybe like a couple because I can perceive it with my human eyes so it's probably more than one frame, right? Gosh, please don't kill me, those dudes. Please don't kill me. Cool. I'm alive! Uh, those, like, shooty guys, like the ones that, like, sneeze at you, they are quite dangerous. Like, they have always been one of my biggest enemies because it's just you need to constantly be aware of where they are aiming and luckily it gives you like the line for aiming but sometimes it's just it's just inconvenient to dodge it or almost impossible and that can screw you over but that's just how the game works i accept it and i embrace it and i like it oh there is some loot that we haven't put it that's cool also, those slimes are just falling down. They are just falling down, and they just keep doing that. I don't even know where they are coming from, but they really, they really wanted to go down here. Huh? Oh, that's a key. That could be good. Oh, there, there's the fireworks. So that key just opens all of the chests that you see, like regardless how much gold it costs, it, it just opens chests for free. And it it's really good for like rushing levels, right? You just enter a level, you don't need to farm gold, at least not as much. Uh, so you just run through it as fast as you can. Uh, and since that's what you want to be doing, like that's a very powerful item. That's like... It seems kind of like redundant, like I just, I'm just gonna use gold for opening chests, like why would I want to waste an activatable for it? But if you have already like really good power on your character, then that's... Like you want to have as much clear speed as possible, and when your character is already super powerful, the easiest way to get clear speed would probably be by getting an item that removes the need to wait for enemies to spawn to get the gold from them, right? Rather than killing them faster, because like you already kill them as fast as possible, right? So it's one of those things for sure. Which is cool, I think. Like, it's still, like, it again plays in the whole, like, action RPG type of, uh, like, genre. Because it's not always just about getting plus one extra damage, right? Sometimes getting plus one percent crit is more valuable than plus one percent damage. And that's like, I like that. I like that stuff a lot. Oh boy. Well, I do have a little bit of invulnerability here, but my god, those things hurt. I probably shouldn't have left them all alone there, unattended for that long, because they are like super strong. I don't even know how to kill them necessarily, especially since they keep healing. But I will have my activatable, so maybe, maybe that's gonna make a difference. I'm just hoping that I can survive fireworks. Go fireworks. Would be cool if the imp... Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what I wanted. Just die, 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 die. No, don't go back in. Okay, I'm back to firing only one shot per time. Ooh, okay. Okay. So this is a different eye. Like, there are two types of them. One gives you a chance for double effect. And the other one reduces the cooldown. So now we have both of them. And, of course, they synergize together. Oh, it's kind of rough. I can't actually go back in there because I don't have any any health. And if I make a mistake, I will die again. And I wouldn't want to do that right now. So I need to be like very careful. It's those like shooty guys. Ow. God damn it. So you never really want to be in a situation like this. Like this is as bad as it gets. Like... This is just a waste of time. Like, you want to be shooting, you want to be fighting, you want to be killing. You do not want to be just standing still waiting to regenerate health. Like, this definitely means that I messed up one way or another, right? But I will try to fight this right now. I will activate all of my stuff. 
try to get a bunch of a bunch of damage in. Okay, a couple of the of the scary boys have died. I shot my stuff the wrong way. But that's all right. Okay, okay, okay. The scary guys are dying. In fact, they are already dead. Nice. Okay, so that that banner really helped and the fact that I've had like all the things kind of go from yeah cool We cleared it up didn't die this time Big win big win for us today Now we just gotta kill this last enemy and go through the teleporter So I have already reached the highest difficulty level ha 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 and uh, Yep, it I guess it can't get worse from here Oh, could it? So this is like the final exploration level you have. Like I'm still at the point in the game where I can just loot things. And this, this teleporter will look like super cool, super fancy. Because it's like technically the final one on this. I don't know. I, I actually don't know what's the lore behind this. I don't know if I'm teleporting from planet to planet or on the same planet. I, I know that we have crashed. Uh, but I don't like technically know how everything else works um, So yeah, and this teleporter will look like super fancy and then you will have a choice Do you want to go back and run some more levels to grind for items? But like keep in mind that the difficulty will keep increasing or do you want to just uh, Go to the final level and challenge the boss like the like the very the very end game of the end game order and uh, I think I will just try to get a little bit more items like it it actually like this run is taking a little bit a little bit long but I like this like this is what I like about these games right is that it just it's just like an endless survival crazy things happen your character can get ridiculously strong ridiculously weak uh, you can just keep playing forever and it's fun for me like that stuff is so damn fun for me that's why I like this game, and that's why I'm really looking forward to playing the second one. Uh, it's still like in early access, or like... Like they have literally just released it, or something like that, into early access, right? Like a week ago. And... I just watched people play it a bunch. And my god, I think it's actually like a very good game, as it is right now. Like, I actually think it's worth it, so I'm definitely gonna do that. We're gonna put some cool... Risk of rain footage on our channel. Hopefully you guys will like it because I'm excited to do that. Like it's going to be very very interesting to like play a game from its like inception, I guess. Almost ish. And just see what they do with it. They might screw it over completely, right? But what if they don't? Just, like what if, what if they don't? What if they actually make a fantastic game out of it? Which I think it already kind of is. <laughs> like, as it stands right now in its early access state. Like, there isn't really too much content in it, but whatever the content they have, seems super fun. So, like, those robot enemies will have, um, you will see those, these white circles show up. That's where those uh, big robots shoot. So, that's how you dodge their attacks. Otherwise, they don't do any damage whatsoever. You just gotta gotta avoid those those things and that's it. And that's basically it. Okay, let's get let's get some double double damage in. I actually really like this uh, pairing for the hunters. Like you get double damage, cooldown reduction, and uh, it it works. I think it works really damn well. I'm glad I got those items. Pretty lucky. Also, I don't know whether or not it gives you the um, Insta kill chance if you get the double the chances for insta kill or not because I feel like it should right like that would make a lot of sense if it should For it to do that I Phrasing is hard Those are the fireworks that I was talking about. Oh, and this is some like really sh Interesting shrines basically you sacrifice your HP and it might give you something, it might give you nothing. Either way, you're gonna get screwed out of your health. So you gotta you gotta just make sure that you want that shrine before you activate it. 
That's pretty cool. I like that risk reward, you know? You know? I, I just like that. I'm actually not huge into gambling, believe it or not. But I really like... Just... I guess killing myself in video games. Because that's like the only other thing that's going to happen here. So let's, let's try it right now. Oh wow, got super lucky. Damn! Okay. So... Now every time I land a critical hit, I get a bunch of attack speed. And I've got two of those items. And the more items you have like that, the longer that buff will last. The problem is of course that I only crit it against enemies who are at 10% health. So... I would need to get, to get some crit going, because otherwise... That item that is like super cool, super strong, especially when you don't have any um, any attack, too much attack speed, I guess I should say, because I have a little bit. Uh, if you don't have too much attack speed, like that, that item will save the day, because it will cap out your attack speed, I believe, uh, by just having a couple of those items, instead of having 13 soldier syringes. And that's huge, of course. Look at how many of those like targeting reticles show up, by the way. So many enemies are here, and I can't kill any of them. But... I, uh, we are kind of surviving. Okay, Toxic Beast. So, this boss ignores, like, um, terrain collision. Well, up until a certain point. She kind of ignores most of the terrain. Except if she can, like, fall off. And then she just spawns a couple of um, other beasts, like tiny ones, which usually are a really good um, good way to get all of your frogs going. Like if you have, um, if we had that frost relic, for example, this would be like a perfect time to get like a bunch of uh, just icicles flying around us, uh, and then we would just charge the beast and kill her with her own kind of spawn more or less but since we don't, don't have that available it's it's kind of not ideal also i can't actually kind of like I'm, I'm struggling i'm struggling i don't have any damage going for me this is not good this is not perfect i can still get hits on her from there but i have to move around all the time otherwise i will get screwed by the by those robots Okay, there we go. Okay, that's a good item. That's a good item. That's a good item. So this timekeeper secret will uh, stop time whenever we fall to 30% health, and that's huge. But it's actually a much better way to track your health than actually looking at the health bar, because it will just stop time, and now you know that you are low health. You need to be careful. While checking it on your health bar is a little bit tedious, to say the least. And it just saved our life, I'm pretty sure. In fact, I'm probably going to die from this. I actually can't clear these enemies fast enough. And even though I have... I even have this leeching seed, so from every single attack I land, I get um, two health. But it only procs one per attack. Uh, so, like... If I pierce, for example, it will only give me health... Once? Actually, no. I don't remember how that works. Oh, an ice cube. Well, there were actually a couple of good items showing up there, but instead we got the ice cube, which I guess is cool. So it will slow down enemies and the chance to completely freeze them, which is nice, but it's not the damage I'm looking for, you know? That's not ideal. Another timekeeper secret. So I actually don't know how these ones stack. I believe they just slow down time for longer so this is more cooldown reduction for my activatable uh, I'll take that so that's by the way what happens when you freeze enemies and knock them back right instead of that robot being where I want them they just flew off of the planet and I'm not a huge fan of that like that's why I don't like those freeze and uh, like knockback mechanics too much it just sometimes it inconveniences you more than it actually benefits you. And I'm not like, I'm not all about that inconvenience life, you know? So this enemy is actually pretty cool because it's like 
it's almost fighting somebody like yourself who has like a bunch of items because they have uh, all these electricity procs and stuff like they have abilities they have like um grenades like it literally has a ukulele on it and a bunch of uh, other items that could drop in the world for you so it's like you are fighting yourself and i think that's kind of like a cool concept for for a boss and i just push them off the cliff so that's cool that's good almost also i'm almost dead and i don't really have a way to heal up myself consistently so that's that's not ideal so I would need to go back into that pack of enemies if I want the loot. And I'm way too low health to do any of that. In fact, I might die to these bees right now because I don't have enough damage to actually like, murder them properly. Okay, cool. We did it. It happened. Oh boy. This is not looking good. Time is frozen, but will it be enough? Will it be enough, though? So it will be enough for something. I got my head stompers, so now if we fall on top of enemies' heads, we're gonna get some damage. And that's good, I guess. But this is like... At this point, it's like, how long can I last until I can open all of these shrines and all of the items? And if I can survive that, then maybe I can get something that redeems this. Otherwise, I just... I could try for the final boss, but... I don't think it, it's going to work too well. I really don't. Also, those bees, because I can't kill them fast enough, they just keep shooting those arrows at me. Not arrows, but like their projectiles. And it just... Hurts. It just hurts. Usually you just one shot those bees or like kills them within a second or so. But like I am struggling. I'm really struggling. Really not looking good for me. But we're gonna try. That's what we do. We try. And that extra attack speed after crits sure should help after we killed those guys. Oof. Okay, have my activatable. Let's do this. Let's get some damage in on this guy. So every boss is guaranteed to drop an item. So this is like a good way to farm up some items too. Especially the basic ones. Because it seems like they tend to drop the most basic items the most often. Okay, some damage in. Bleeding. Not the best item. Not the best damage item. Because I think you can only get one instance of bleeding on an enemy. And... Well, that's basically it. Like with other items, it's like prox once, prox twice, just stacking damage and stuff. And with this one, well, an enemy will bleed for like four seconds. Enjoy that. Like, and it's not the strongest bleeding in the world either. I might be wrong about it. Like, I, I don't know. I, I never felt the power of that item too much. But it might be good. I don't know. Like as much as I, like I've played this game a lot, but I still don't know everything about it. Uh, it still has some nuance to it that's kind of uh, hidden from me, in a way. But even then, it feels super cool. So let's sacrifice 65% of our HP for this one. Oh! Some, uh, some, some movement speed. Movement speed is nice, but I'm now at the point in life where I might just... I might just die. I might just die here. And there is nobody, nothing, nothing that can save me from this, from this madness, you know? I might have messed up. That might have been an overinvestment of my health. But movement speed though, movement speed is nice. It's just, still, I would very much prefer damage to this. So I'm just creating these boss zones where I should never show up uh, ever again. And I'm just hoping that... I don't know, I'm just hoping that they would somehow die without me fighting them. <laughs> you know what, so? Those, um... Oh, gasoline, that's nice. Um, what am I trying to say? 
those insta kills proc very often like more often than i would think it would or the way this works i guess is because it takes me so long to kill something like i fire off a lot of bullets so of course i have like a decent chance to insta kill it because that's the only way i kill it <laughs> And this is definitely like one of those runs where you're like, okay, well, let's see as far, like, how far can I get? How far can I actually get with this? Because it's not looking good. And I like this. I like this a lot, in fact. So I'm just gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna see how far it gets. And it's going to be glorious. And they will write books about it. Probably not. Oh, no! I didn't want to act... Okay, so if you are standing right next to an eye, like, if there are overlapping anythings in your vicinity and you press activate, all of them activate. So I just accidentally activated the shrine when I just tried to revive the drone. And I, I think I was left with 70 kills or something. Timekeeper secret saved my life. Good job on that guy. But ultimately that was way too risky. Should not have even like tried to do that. Like I knew how that works, and I still did it. But it's like one of those things where, well, I know that this is a bad idea, but I might as well do it, right? And no, you don't have to do it. You really don't have to do it. You really, really don't have to do it. There are four of those beasts. It's not the worst thing to have spawned at this angle, honestly, because I can get some free damage on them. And then hopefully, hopefully it's going to work. The imp on the other hand, that guy is going to be kind of annoying. Unless we just push them back. Again, I have like this really cool um, activatable synergy. So I just need to get it back up and then we can start doing some, some solid damage. Yep. So items disappear after a period of time. I don't know how long it takes for them to do that, but I know that they do. Oh, nice. So we've got a legendary item that only drops from the imp, and then we also got a taser. So the taser just slows down enemies. It's nothing like too special, but that legendary item that we have picked up, it will, it actually summoned an imp for us to fight with us. And I like that's pretty cool. It can die, but it will also respawn, so it's like, it's a permanent companion, and I like those very much. I like any sort of like pets, ads, like anything. Anything I can have that runs around with me and helps me in my fights, I love it. I'm almost dead, by the way. I need, I need to get out of there for just a second. I need to regenerate. I wish I had anything that actually heals us. Also, we picked up a Frost Relic, so we are definitely getting some items that have uh, good damage scaling. It's just I'm still kind of behind, so I need more of them. And I need some crit. Like, what I would really, really like right now is to for Glasses to drop. Because Glasses is the item that gives you 10% crit. So as long as that, like, the moment that happens, it's going to be huge for us. It took me so long to kill it, and even then I didn't kill it with, uh, with actual, like, my damage. It was just an insta-kill. After I whittled it, whittled it down all the way, almost to death, it just broke the insta-kill. Unbelievable. So sad. So sad. I mean, I'm glad it died, I guess, but I wish I was the one killing it. Or I wish I actually, like, killed it or whatever. Okay, so gasoline also um, gasoline explodes enemies in a pile of fire. Fire does a little bit of damage, and everyone rejoices. I'm level 19, by the way, right? Like we have been level 15, what, like an hour ago? So this is how slow it gets, especially if you don't have uh, lots of damage. 
Especially if you don't have lots and lots of damage. So I would like for that Imp to come come here with us, but if they don't want to, they don't want to. I believe I can shoot them across the screen, so I'm gonna just do that. And hope that it works. I think it works. I can't like confirm 100%, but should be fine. It's nice to have these banners. They actually placed in a decent in decent spots for me, so I can actually like utilize them properly. Okay, the imp is dead. So I guess the chopper is actually pretty pretty good. The guaranteed crit item is actually pretty good on like big bosses. Because getting that low, low health on that boss is going to be, of course... It's going to be like longer than having that low health on anybody else. That's good, of course. Ouch, 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 ouch. I keep investing into those health shrines and I feel like... I feel like I'm shooting myself in the foot. Quite literally. Because that's kind of quite literally what I'm doing. Nice. I think I'm hitting the imp. I'm hitting something because I can hear the collision noises for shots. Something died. Something big died. Oh, nice. Another timekeeper secret. Let's pick it up. So, by the way, that item down in the bottom, uh, that's how you unlock different like modifiers for your game because you can do that too. You can put in, like, not custom modifiers, but they're like... Um, I think they're like seven different options you can have like enemies or will only ever spawn as elites or enemies will like drop loot that's not random you will actually be able to select which loot drops like they will drop a cache and you open it and then you select the item you want which is kind of cool like that way you can it's kind of like a good way to test out different builds you want for your characters and like maybe like learn the game and like which items are worth picking up, which items aren't. But that's like a good way to do that, I guess. I guess, you know. I am like in so much danger all the time. It's it's hilarious. I think there was a boss here. I might have killed them accidentally. That's funny. <laughs> That's quite funny. How long can I stay here and not die? Okay, that's enough. Let's try to kill this guy. Actually, let's try to kill the guy that's on top. Also, those guys sometimes say things. I don't know what they mean. I don't know. I don't know what that is all about. But they, they just say stuff sometimes. The imps. The tiny boy imps. Oh, that's a bad angle. Come on, fall down, fall down, please fall down, please fall down. There we go. Now we are talking. Okay, let's let's just blow them up. And now they're energy cells, so we will have a lot of attack speed on low health. The problem is that I don't want to be on low health. So this is the power of the Frost Rabbit, by the way. You just walk in and things just die. If you have a bunch of kills recently, things just die. And it also, like, it can crit, it can do all sorts of stuff, it procs all of the other items, I believe. So it just escalates to craziness. Or maybe most of the items get procced. It doesn't, like, technically matter how many... Well, okay, I guess... Technically, it does matter, but it doesn't like matter too much Okay, let's kill this guy though With our power. Oh prison shackles. That's nice. So that's just a passive slow on enemies whenever we hit them It's a guaranteed one uh, So it's usually like a good way to kite them. I, I much prefer this to any sort of knockback and uh, freezing because it doesn't mess as much with... Um... Oh, there we go. Frost Relic. Let's go, Toxic Beast. Let's hang out. 
Because like I killed all of her spawn, so she gave me a bunch of uh, like a bunch of those uh, frost relics, and that's just free damage. I still don't have any like because I don't have any extra damage and whatnot. It doesn't really hurt too much, so it takes a while to kill enemies. Plus, I think that the difficulty is scaled like so high up that it really, really takes a while to kill anything. I think I might have overstayed here too, because I don't know whether or not I will be able to use all of those health shines. Because I am I'm just getting overwhelmed, so I'd rather start, start a new level and then open up some chests. Oh, that's actually not a bad item. Uh, that's like a brain that you drop and it will be bouncing. It will just keep bouncing and uh, it will do more, more, more and more damage. So I'm just gonna try to start a new level here. This run is already taking way too long. So this is what I'm talking about with the normal difficulty. Like if I was on the hardest one, I would have been dead, guaranteed. Like an hour and 10 minutes ago with this build. But because we are on normal, if you play at least a little bit smart and if you just stay safe, you can survive for so long and recover so many runs, it's ridiculous. So that's like, I guess that would be my complaint or like with the game or something like that. Is that it just, sometimes it just gets tedious, but it's just, I guess I could go kill myself if it gets too tedious, so it's kind of on me, but I, I don't know. I don't, because I can't really like blame the game for this. It's just, it's like not hard enough. <laughs> But since there is a harder difficulty that's like too hard, you know? <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know whether or not it's a bad thing or a good thing or what kind of a thing that is. It's just a thing. I guess it's just the feature of the game more so than anything else. Because I can't, like, I can't call this a, like, this is like a very stupid thing that this game does. No, it's just, it's just the way it happens. That's just the way it works. And you can't really blame anything for it. Because it's not technically even bad. I don't know. I guess it's a feature. Sure. I'm just checking whether or not there are some enemies here. You will have this arrow pointing you to the nearest enemy. Uh, so usually you can kind of like, if you know the layout, you can judge whether or not you need to go somewhere or not to find enemies there. Okay, like, that, that's annoying, right? Because I had to stop shooting, wait for them to climb back up. That's a little bit annoying. I can resurrect the drone, and I will. I spent all of my gold doing that, but... Boy, I need that damage. Nice! I needed that insta-kill. So, if you don't want to just kill enemies, you can just push them off the cliff. You won't get items for that. Or I think you get, maybe you get experience and uh, money, I'm not sure. You definitely don't get items. Oh, in fact, they have survived, so that's, that's, even, that's even cooler. They are just, they're just hanging out there, that's, that's cool. Now they are dead. And if you fall off the level, don't worry, you're just gonna respawn. You will lose some health for it. I think it's like 30% of your health, but don't worry too much. It's kind of almost as bad as just falling from a great height, you know? Not too big of a deal. At least I have a ton of movement speed, so I can traverse levels decently fast. It would be cool to get um, a whip uh, that lets you move faster when out of combat. That's like really good for like finishing levels and getting like the final final kills and stuff and whatever <laughs> when enemies are just spread out too far okay that would be a big complaint sometimes an, an enemy is going to be like stuck all the way in the beginning of the map and you will have to like run across the world to reach them and that's super annoying and in the second ones that actually like went back on that like you don't actually have to kill all of the enemies in order to enter the portal you just have to survive long enough 
and that's it and then you move along in this one you have to kill everyone and sometimes they are stuck really really far away like way too far away but <laughs> this is like way too long <laughs> i didn't expect this to last this long 77 minutes i i thought okay yeah i mean i don't know what i thought this is not ideal for sure like my throat hurts i am not sure how long i can keep talking but boy i'm gonna try Also, we didn't get to see the hidden level. Uh, that's also like a cool thing. There's like a hidden level in this game uh, on a very specific map, so so you gotta be you gotta make sure that you know about it, otherwise you might miss out on that. And it's kind of hard to find, so that's too. I was kind of, yeah, I was hoping to get that map and maybe show you the hidden level. It's like it's like not super cool or anything like that, but. It's just a thing in the game, you know? It's just, it's just a thing. So those worms kind of can get annoying real damn fast. Because they just keep following you like that. And if you don't have the health to survive hits from them, eventually they will just wear you down and murder you. Luckily, thanks to my infusion, I have so much health, it's ridiculous. Actually, that's not too much. Like, I'm not even halfway to the cap, so it's not its not too ridiculous, but... It's decent. It's its health, you know? It's, it's some health. It's a little bit of health. I might die. You know what? As much as I'm... Ah, I'm so good. I'm so strong. I'm unkillable. I am technically almost dead. I also haven't killed anything in a while. Let's get a random item. Didn't get lucky. Oh, this shrine is pretty cool. It will spawn... Oh, there we go. Give me that attack speed. Oh, triple jump. I'll take it. Triple jump. Triple jump. That's good. That's real good. And some health regen. Yes, please. I need that. And here comes the attack speed. Cool. So this shrine right here... It spawns a bunch of minions that run away from you, like they will jump to your back always. But as a huntress, you can like, because you you can face one direction and shoot the other direction, you can easily kill all of them while like spawning them behind you. But other classes, of course, can't do that. So that's like, kind of that's that's interesting. That's an interesting interaction. All I'm saying. Boy. Yeah, these enemies are real tough. Real tough ones. Uh, let's go random. Oh, nice. Below the wisp. So now every time we kill somebody... Okay, there, not every time. There is a chance that when we kill somebody, they will explode. And that's another damage source. That's a really good damage source that we can use for killing enemies okay okay good got some more movement speed and a chance to evade an attack usually that's a good idea the more health you have the more uh, value there is in that of course because mess like it's harder and harder to get one point of health but two percent evasion will just scale your health by two percent technically under most circumstances. Nice. So now they're just throwing bosses at us. That's usually what happens when you start going back in levels. The game stops like caring about your survivability and they just keep throwing chugging bosses at you left and right. And uh, this is exactly what's happening. And also I think it has higher chance of spawning like powered up versions for bosses which is also a big deal okay jellyfish has finally died oh that's like a really strong activatable 
But I'm not sure that it's stronger than our cloning. But I, I guess I will just pick it up and show it off. I'll just pick it up and show what it does. Because it's pretty cool. It basically gives you the same abilities as those uh, jellyfishes throw at you. Okay, that's huge. Like it will summon a bunch of those things and it will like, charge at enemies and murder them. Definitely not as... You can spam it, I guess. I guess that's the strength of it. It's super spammable. So maybe I will keep it, you know? I'm, it's fun. It doesn't do a lot of damage though, so I'm gonna just switch it up. <laughs> it's fun, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. Zed Colossal Neurals though that we picked up. Like Zed's a huge upgrade for us because that thing gives us armor, which is equivalent of damage uh, reduction. Uh, it gives us armor, damage, and health as flat values. And we have just ramped up our uh, damage significantly. So, as long as I keep this going, this might this might have been the legendary that we needed to redeem this. Like, that stuff only drops from those colossi, and it's super rare. Like, it's extremely rare. Also, screw that lightning blast. I hate it so much. Like, if you don't right, run the right way, um, you're just gonna get destroyed. Which I did. But I have triple jump now, so technically I shouldn't even get hit by it. But I did. Oh boy. Okay, I should pick up that item though. Okay, so this thing gives you healing every time you crit. Uh, and it, it has more healing than the life seed, which only gives you two. So this thing has four, I believe. And the problem right now is that I only crit against enemies who are super low health. But the moment I get that crit going, oh boy. Boy, we will have some good, good healing. That's actually like one of the best sustain items you can get. You just need high crit for it to like truly use it. But it just scales better than the life seed. Because life seed only gives you two and then every consecutive only gives you one. And this one gives you four and then every consecutive gives you two, I think. And then if you reach 100% crit, it's just double the healing for the same amount of items. I guess technically you invest uh, lenses into it or like crit items into it, so it's not it's not necessarily equivalent like that, but it feels like that, you know? It just feels like that. This is crazy, by the way. Much like <laughs> like if you watched only like ten minutes of this, the first ten minutes of this, you'd be like, oh my god, this guy sucks. He just died ten minutes in or something. And this is very different from that. Like, this is the complete opposite of it. I'm just sitting here, 85 minutes in, I can't talk anymore, and I just keep shooting them arrows, and enemies almost kill me, but not quite. Thanks to all of the survivability item, I was, items I was so lucky to get. So that's definitely like a mark of skill right there. And just, just, you know, just like getting all of this RNG in my favor. That's how you get skilled, right? That's what skill is? I mean, why else would Hearthstone be like a competitive game, right? I mean, clearly. If it teaches you anything, is that skill is just RNG. It would be cool to get even more cooldown reductions though for our activatable. I would love to have that going for me. Not as much as crit, but still would be nice because that triple arrow fire stuff is actually it's not only powerful it also looks super cool and i i haven't really used it too much so it's kind of like it's it's dope like i didn't really get a chance to use this item too often oh nice so burning witness now every time we kill an enemy our attack power goes up temporarily and also we leave like a, a blazing tra trail where we run and of course it does damage and it's another damage source for enemies 
and that's cool. And I believe it stacks with itself, not, uh, as in like uh, the more enemies you kill, the more damage and stuff you get. Uh, so you can get some really good temporary buffs as long as you keep, keep killing, which is harder than you might think. Still alive, still kicking, still don't do too much damage, but some. And some is better than none. That's what they say, right? Oh yeah, I forgot that I have uh, my Frost Relic. Could be using it to kill all of these bosses faster. That, that's kind of like a misplay on my part. Keep forgetting. Like, I forgot, like, cause I didn't get it like, for so long in this run that I have all of my... Uh, like, I just don't have my instinct set up for that. Money bags, yay! So now enemies drop a little bit more gold, which I guess is nice. And this item would uh, heal us every time we use it, which is huge. But that's not what I need at the moment. I still need damage. I would very much like more damage. But this is crazy, like I'm I'm just farming. I'm just farming bosses right now. And to me it's fun. It's probably boring to watch as hell because it's just me running back and forth, using my abilities and stuff and stuff dying. But it's fun for me, you know, it's fun for me. Now some monster tools, so that's not bad. It will heal us uh, every time we kill something. So it's like not, not a bad way to heal, all things considered. I would like to get a little bit more like damage actual like mitigation. Like a couple more bears, for example, that would be cool. A little bit more dodge chance, that's always nice. Oh, there we go, that's nice. Sticky Bomb. Sticky Bomb scales infinitely, so... Like, I think every everyone you pick up increases the Sticky Bomb's damage by 30%. Uh, so, eventually, it's going to be the biggest source of damage I have. Not just yet, so, but eventually. Also, you can hear all of the sounds just getting, like, crazy overlaid over themselves and just peeking the hell. Uh, just picking the hell, you know? And, uh, yeah, that's because all of the things are, like, proccing and just hitting all of the enemies. And especially when you have, like, um, attacks that explode and whatnot, like, the more enemies they hit, like, the more explosions, and then those explosions explode on more enemies, it's just, it's just a loop of just disaster. A loop of insanity. Got a little bit more maximum health, that's good. That's pretty good, that's really good. So, now that I have started cleaning up, I feel like it's time to move on. I could maybe even challenge the final boss with what we currently have. But I would like to clear one more level. I just would like to get some crit, right? I feel like after I get some crit, I can just do stuff. But right now it just feels feels awkward not to have any. Like I I only crit enemies who are almost dead. Which is as use uh, almost as useless as it gets. Like it's kinda nice versus bosses. But aside from that, it's like whatever. Who cares? Like they would have died anyway, right? Die Colossus, there we go. Oh, that's nice. And that's a beaching seed, seed. So now we heal for... I think I have only two of those. So I should be healing for three. Three health every time I land an attack. And any attack. Like any ability, a basic attack, anything. That's nice. Of course. 
Oh, more health regeneration. It also scales infinitely, health regen, and all the healing scales infinitely. So, that's nice to get. It's always nice to get. Oh, this is... That seems dangerous, if anything. Yeah, bosses have definitely slowed down, so I feel like I gotta move out. So these are all of my uh, frost... Like, uh, frost things. Hitting the... Like... Because Magma Worm has multiple hitboxes on it. So if I get those frost relic procs, I can just get some crazy damage on Magma Worms. Because it will collide with so many things at once. And it just keeps going. It's... It's like overload. Insanity overload right there. Ow. So it's definitely a good idea to do that. I gotta... Okay, I gotta, like, decide what to do here, because I'm right now kind of not doing much. Level 21, though, so that's not bad. I guess. Okay, got those frost relic procs. Die worms! Okay, there we go. Oh my lord. Yes, all the damage. All the damage. Give me more damage! More damage! I want more da- Okay, I'm out of relics. Let's go back. Oh, out of icicles? Whatever. Got the feather. Let's loot all of the chests that I have not looted for some reason. Please die, worms. It's time for you to die. There I'm, I was just complaining how the game wasn't giving me any war and bosses. And here it is. I think I actually looted everything up top. Now, I, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure I looted everything up top. So I'm just gonna go activate the teleporter. Or maybe I should kill the bosses first? Should I though? Should I though? Oh my god, there are so many of those jellyfishes there, it's crazy. Is it? It's jellyfish, right? For multiples, that would make a lot more sense than saying jellyfishes like an idiot. Oh, another burning witness! Okay, let's do the teleporter. Screw it. If I die, I die. It's it's about damn time. So there is the overloading colossus. He will do electrical attacks uh, together with his like standard kit. All of my drones are so dead, and I don't have any any like any money to resurrect them. I, I need to get this stuff killed so that I can get some... Um... some good damage on these bosses. Ooh, yeah, he you hear that? That's the sound of epicness. Finally found some crit. 10% crit is gonna go a long way to making me powerful. Basically, at this point, it's a 10% damage increase, and that's hard to get, right? That's how that works. Things are dying so fast! Oh, are they? I mean, they are kind of dying, I guess. Oh, 
And now we can proc our attack speed just at any time. Um, those like wolf masks because they proc attack speed from crits. Now that we've got crits going, not only like one time every minute, it's uh, it's gonna proc more often. Logic, deduction, and stuff. Die scavenger, scavenger. It's really supposed to be pronounced jellyfish, doesn't it? Or oh, sad jellyfish, not jellyfishes. I feel dumb now. I feel pretty dumb now. Whoops. Oh, this feels good though. Oh, finally things are dead. And there's a little bit of peace and quiet. Well, just a tiny little bit of peace and quiet. Feels good. And uh, there we go. There we go. Let's break the. Where the hell am I? I think I am. I actually lost control of my sight and control of my character. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm stuck in a wall. I don't know how I got here. But. I mean, this is like as good time as any I guess to um, I honestly don't know what's going on I wish I knew but I'm stuck here and I'm going to die to this uh, stupid uh, enemy never mind I'm gonna kill them okay now I just gotta get unstuck I have never had this happen to me before it even proc'd me mushrooms that heal me if I stand static I'm trying to move around right now, but it doesn't like, doesn't work. In fact, let's do this. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that's basically like uh, my life right now. Cool. <laughs> well, so I guess I didn't get to show you the final, final level of this and like the boss fight and everything. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't even know how this is possible. Like, what, what would have provoked this? Maybe I blinked into a wall, like, at a perfect frame, like, at a perfect distance, so that it blinks me through it. Like, where's, um, because it's, like, a rectangle, right? So where those edges meet? There is probably like a tiny little frame of distance, not a frame, but like not even a pixel because like it's not pixels until it's rendered. So like in the very game engine, there is like a point, you know, like a point and infinity point where like it needs to be so small that it's infinite. And I just somehow managed to fit through that to fall in here. <laughs> Um, but I guess it's a, as good time as any to end this, and cool. I actually can't wait to play the second one, but I thought that maybe we should just go back into the first one and have some fun with it. This is the first time this has ever happened to me, this is cool, this is pretty cool. <laughs>